and today I'm going to be showing you the updated version of the houseplant potting mix that I make here at home and I'm going to try to answer some of the questions that you have asked in my previous video. So yeah, let's get to it. I have been making my own houseplant potting mix for about two years now and I can tell you that I really like it because I know exactly what I'm putting in the potting mix for my plants and also it's a very relaxing process so I really like making it. For the ingredients, as you may know from my previous video, I like to use seven parts of coconut coir. So this is basically coconut husk compressed into a brick like this one. And it is very good for moisture retention and I really like using coco coir because it's a very good alternative to peat moss. As you may know, peat moss is not a renewable source. In fact, it's a fossil fuel that takes thousands of years to make. And this one is a renewable source, so I like to use it instead of peat. When you buy coconut coir, you will generally get something like this, which is a very dry, heavy brick. And all you need to do is to cut it into small pieces, however much you feel that you will need, and add water so the coir can absorb it like so. After about 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the amount of coconut coir that you have, it will be ready to be used. The next ingredient that I add to my mix is two parts of worm casting. Worm castings are an excellent source of nutrition because they contain the most important macronutrients that our plants need. And these are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. On top of that, they also have micronutrients, trace minerals, and beneficial bacteria. So it's an excellent source of nutrition. The third ingredient that I like to add to my potting mix is very important because it will add drainage. And this will help us prevent overwatering our plant. And this one is two parts of perlite or pumice. Now, I can tell you that I really prefer pumice now because I've seen that pumice doesn't float as much as perlite. Throughout time, you will see that perlite will come up to the surface of your potting mix, whereas pumice stays in its place. Of course, perlite does the trick and it does provide drainage for some time to your potting mix. So you can always use perlite, but pumice is also a very good alternative. I can tell you that when I am making a potting mix for some cuttings for my propagations, I like to use an extra part of perlite or pumice or both together. So this will be three parts of perlite or pumice. This time I'm just going to add an extra part of perlite. This is because I'm going to be using this potting mix to put a cutting from my Pallia peperomiotis. So I want it extra fluffy so the roots can grow and breathe. Once I have added all of my ingredients, I mix them all together and then I use them to pot my plant. So let's just pot this Pallia here. Now many people have asked me how to store extra soil that we don't need to use that day. And this is a very good question. Before we store the soil, we want to make sure that it is dry to prevent any mold in the soil. So what I do is to cover my potting mix with some plastic or a plastic bag, but always open it every day or have some holes so air can come in and it can dry out quicker. Once your potting mix is dry, you can put it in a sealable bag. And it is best to use black or dark bags because that is going to prevent the sunlight from coming in. Then seal your bag and store it in a place that is going to be cool and dry. I store my potting mix in my gardening box, which is in the storage room. So we don't get any sunlight in. It's dark and dry. And then you can save your mix for the next time. So tell me, do you like to buy your potting mix? or make it yourself. Please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Okay, ciao!